question is, are the numbers of cases, the new cases that we're seeing in Oklahoma, have they leveled off? Or are they still increasing? The best answer I can give is we think there is a slow but steady downward trend to the numbers of new cases. It's hard to, hard to get a handle on because one day we'll get in 30 new cases, the next day we'll get 130 new cases. And so we do a couple of different things to flatten that, uh, the lumpiness of the curve in a sense is we take look at three day and seven day running averages. And that helps the up and down movement of the reporting of new cases be a little bit more easy to understand. By both of those measures, there's a slight but demonstrable downward trend over the last two weeks. So the question is, have we passed the peak? And the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on what peak we're talking about. We have probably passed the peak of hospitalizations for now. That doesn't mean that we won't see another resurgence in the future. We have not yet passed the peak of deaths because we're still seeing and recording deaths in Oklahoma. Although our number of deaths per day will also start going down now that hospitalizations have gone down too. So the question is, do we expect a second surge or a second wave of infections? If you look simply at infections, we will more than likely have a second and perhaps a third wave of infections. Now I'm saying that because that's how epidemic influenza worked. And I believe in the 1918-1919 influenza epidemic, there were actually three to four waves or different distinct waves of viral infection. And those in part had to do with the seasonality of influenza and population movements. Like the second one was catalyzed when the American troops came back to the US from World War I in Europe. So it's still a bit speculative about the next waves of this coronavirus, but the other circulating coronaviruses that we have do have a seasonality that is like influenza, which means that it picks up in the winter months. The other example we have is back from 2009 with the swine variant influenza. And in fact, we did have a, a surge or a, um, a resurgence of cases in September, October, when schools reopened. So it is likely that we will have some kind of a resurgence of COVID-19 also in the fall and winter. Although that's not guaranteed, it is likely. That's an important question is what can we do to sort of protect ourselves and protect society? Right now, until we have a vaccine, the best thing that you can do has to do with public health interventions. And there are two main ones that we're dealing with right now. One is social distancing, so it's staying away from other folks. And the other one is mask wearing in public. I just saw data today that were reported by the European Centers for Disease Control that suggested that those interventions in Europe had a very profound effect on the transmissibility and the transmission of COVID-19. And they measure the transmission rate by the r naught number. And if one means that one case of a given infection, in this case COVID, causes one other infection in the population that they can trace. In most of the time of this pandemic, the r naught value for COVID-19 has been somewhere around two and a half to three and a half, and sometimes as high as four, meaning that one case caused four other cases. Data out of Europe suggests that since they enacted their now, fairly strict social distancing policies and the shutdowns of their economy, the r naught value actually went below one and was in the half to three quarter range. So that's really quite a tremendous difference right there. And so those are the things that will, it'll be important for us to continue to do is to maintain a, a good degree of social distancing. And when you can't do that, wearing masks, particularly in public.